Welcome back, future BCPS graduates. This is the video lesson for ELA 11, Lesson 1, during the week of June 8th to 12th. In this lesson, we will explore some writing prompts that will help you to really cement what you've learned about the use of multiple central ideas or themes in conveying complex topics. The writing prompts are inspired by the unit's essential questions and allow you to develop your writing as a poet, artist, or storyteller. Let's take a closer look at the learning objective for this week. After this lesson, you will be able to create a poem, story, or poster to convey multiple themes or central ideas that build on one another to provide a complex account of the topic. The form of expression that you choose, either poem, story, or poster, will determine what needs to be included in your writing. The pre-writing that you will do at the end of today's lesson will help you to think about how the details you choose to include will combine multiple themes or central ideas. The discussion response this week asks you to think about the text that you connect with the most. The writing prompt options are inspired by the text that you've read throughout the unit, so it is important to write about a topic that you feel strongly about. Rest assured that you may pick any of the three writing prompts, even if you do not feel strongly about the text that inspired it. The three texts that inspired the writing prompts are A Soldier for the Crown by Charles Johnson, How It Feels to Be Colored Me by Zora Neale Hurston, and On Women's Right to Vote by Susan B. Anthony. Option one, or the storyteller prompt, asks you to write a brief story about a time that you felt like a newcomer in a strange environment in your own life. This can be a literal interpretation, like a time that you changed schools or moved to a new place, or it can be a metaphorical interpretation, like a time that you went through a mental, physical, spiritual, or emotional transition. You may draw from your experiences, or you may write about a completely imagined experience, as long as you develop the themes of isolation and lack of control over one's destiny. Option two, or the poet prompt, asks you to write a poem about a real or imagined experience that was critical to your own self-discovery and self-pride. You may use a scenario inspired by Zora Neale Hurston's essay, such as childhood experiences, moving to a new location, a powerful memory that you had with a friend, or you may create your own experience to draw from. Option three, or the artist, artist prompt, asks you to design a poster that conveys the unconstitutionality of denying the right to vote to women and how this violation of constitutional rights is dehumanizing. Your poster will need to include both visual elements and text in order to convey these central ideas. In addition, you are asked to write a brief rationale, three to five sentences, that describes the design of your poster in relation to the central ideas that you develop. In the try it section of this lesson, you will answer three questions in order to break down the prompt. I've included some ideas on this slide. This is not an all-inclusive list, but rather some ideas to get you thinking and a way to check your own work. The first question that you will answer is, what is the form of writing that you chose? What will you need to include in order to adhere to this form of writing? For option one, this would be a narrative. You would want to consider how you will develop narrative elements such as character, point of view, plot, setting, conflict, etc. For option two, this would be a poem. You would want to think about the poetic structure, form, sound patterns of the words that you choose, figurative language, etc. For option three, this would be a poster. You would want to think about how you will combine images, and text, format, structure, and color. The second question is, what should be included as the focus of your written response? 
For option one, the themes that you're exploring are isolation and lack of control over one's destiny. For option two, the themes you will develop are self-discovery and self-pride. For option three, the central ideas that you will develop are unconstitutionality and dehumanization. Finally, what elements, if any, from the mentor text will you adapt for your written response? For option one, you might want to consider second person narration, man versus society conflict, perseverance, suspense, ambiguity, etc. Let's take a closer look at A Soldier for the Crown. Notice how the story is written in second person point of view with the pronoun you. The author does this to both hide the identity of the main character until the end of the story and to encourage the reader to identify with the main character throughout. Can you think of a way to use second person narration in your short story? The author of this story also helps the reader to get to know the character at the beginning of the story by showing how the main character is able to win even when the odds are not in her favor. The perseverance to overcome societal barriers is critical to the reader's understanding of the story. What character traits will you develop early in your story to convey the themes of isolation and lack of control over one's destiny? Finally, notice how the author creates suspense early in the story by establishing that the main character enjoys taking risks. This leaves the reader wondering about the risks that the main character will take and wanting to read more. How can you create suspense and ambiguity in your story? If you choose option two, the elements from the mentor text that you might want to adapt for your own writing are extended metaphor, chronological order, and personal reflection. Let's take a look at Zora Neale Hurston's essay, How It Feels to Be Colored Me. Notice how the author uses a brown paper bag filled with various items to illustrate how all people have elements of their personality and experiences that are unique, and yet there is a universality to what makes people human. This artistic use of extended metaphor helps us to understand a concept that is difficult to convey through language alone. How can you use figurative language like an extended metaphor in your poem to convey your complex ideas about self-discovery and self-pride? In addition, this example is the final paragraph that reveals the way the author views her identity at the time it was written. Hurston takes the reader through experiences from her childhood to her experiences as a college student and ends with her current perception of herself. The chronological order of the essay helps the reader connect with the author and her experiences. Could you use chronological order to structure your poem? Or does another structure make sense? Finally, notice how the author speaks only about her experiences and viewpoint using the personal pronoun I. This helps the reader to connect with her perspective. How can you use personal reflection to convey your ideas? Finally, if you chose option three, the elements from the mentor text that you might want to consider adapting for your written response are deductive reasoning and the use of rhetorical appeals and devices. Let's unpack the way that Susan B. Anthony uses rhetoric in her speech titled On Women's Right to Vote. Let's start with the rhetorical appeals. Notice how Susan B. Anthony makes her argument easy to follow logically. Think about this in terms of if-then statements. For example, Susan B. Anthony's argument can be summarized that if women are persons, then they are citizens. If women are citizens, then no state can take away their right to vote. If no state can take away their right to vote, then any law preventing women from voting is illegal. Susan B. Anthony also establishes her credibility by demonstrating her knowledge of the Constitution. How can you combine text and images in order to make a logical argument and establish your credibility on your poster? Now, 
let's examine Anthony's use of rhetorical devices. Notice how Anthony begins her argument by asking a question not intended to be answered. This is particularly effective because it makes the clarity of her argument obvious to her audience. Anthony also uses deductive reasoning by drawing a certain conclusion, the unconstitutionality of denying women the right to vote, for her audience. This is reinforced by Anthony's use of absolute language, such as no, every, and null and void. Anthony's message is made clear and easy to understand by her use of a variety of rhetorical appeals and devices. How can you use rhetorical questions, deductive reasoning, and absolute language to convey a clear message on your poster? Finally, in the Show What You Know section of this lesson, you've been given a graphic organizer that can be used regardless of the prompt that you chose. In the graphic organizer, you will document the themes or central ideas that you will convey and the details that you will include in your writing that help to develop these themes or central ideas. Themes and central ideas can interact and develop one another, so the details that you include might work for both themes or central ideas. This graphic organizer is a suggestion, so you may create your own form of pre-writing to turn into your teacher instead. For example, if you would prefer to draft a copy of your poster before creating it, that would be an acceptable form of pre-writing. In lesson two, you are going to be given a rubric to check your writing before submitting to your teacher. Thank you for joining us and check back next week for our final video lesson for this period of remote learning.